Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to do the front brakes on your Honda Civic. Now, I have the 2017 Civic, which is the 10th generation, but a lot of the Civics, the front brakes are all very, very similar. So you can, uh, and the CRVs, and actually most Honda products, the brakes are all very, very similar. So you just have to change torque specs depending on which model you have. So I like to have a workshop manual. This is a Haynes workshop manual. All right, that's a good reference. Um, I bought my parts this time at CarQuest and for the premium pads and the premium rotors I got I spent uh, $209 and that includes brake cleaner which will also need brake cleaner. Okay. So some of the other things that you're going to need I use anti-seize compound pretty much on everything. Um, this is ultra disc brake caliper lube so use those on the calipers on a couple of different spots uh, torque wrenches one set at 25 one set at 80 you'll need those um, don't necessarily need a braking bar but a half inch braking bar and then a 3 8 inch drive I used um, impact driver not required but if you have one It'll speed your uh, taking wheels off. Uh, four inch, four or more inch C clamp. I use a mini sledge for taking parts off. I'll show you that. Uh, I also have a small wire brush. Now I find these are really handy. Um, I also used an impact driver, and I used another Phillips bit. So this is uh, the biggest Phillips bit you can get, and I used just a regular Phillips you'll see me use that <laughs> all right and then we needed a 19 mil socket a 17 mil socket and a 12 mil socket and that's everything that you need to do the front brakes of your car uh, a couple of jacks a couple of jack stands would be handy you can do one side at a time I like to do both sides sort of at the same time and if you get yourself lost you can always refer to the other side so step one Step one, I'm going to chalk the wheels. I use some old leftover bricks. So your car doesn't roll back and forth. If you don't have an impact gun, use a braking bar and a 19 mil bolt to just start to loosen these. So you're just going to want to just give it a little bit of a turn. Just, you know, say half a rotation one rotation just to make sure that they're all loose so that you can take them off after because when they're really tight you won't be able to take them off once the car is in the air now when you jack up your car there's this flange here it's a reinforced flange that's your jack point so you want to make sure that your jack is right there Okay, on that flange so that's where I put my jack right there and I just slide it over so this tooth is on the side of it and then it's supported in two places jack it up until your wheels are off the ground by an inch or two then you want to take some axle stands and find a nice solid part of the frame to put these under don't If you have an impact gun and a compressor, you don't have to pre-loosen these. You can just take them off, remember. <clears throat> Alright, so after you take off the, the front wheel, we're going to use little WD-40 or release all or something like that and we're going to spray around here around the hub because that's really tight on the hub and then around all the uh, wheel studs okay and spray around that because they're really tight there and then on the Hondas they always have that screw the screw that holds your um, rotor on during the assembly process so we're going to 
give a little shot of release all to all those spaces all the way around here and then that one for sure. Even before we take the caliper off we're going to compress the caliper piston and it's easier to do that here than you can take off your caliper easier. So we're just going to use a C-clamp and this one is a 4 inch C-clamp so you'll need at least a 4 inch make sure that it's on the pads and then you'll see the comp you'll see the whole thing move okay. just compress it a little bit you don't have to use a lot of pressure so first we're going to take off the caliper slide bolts so we're going to take them off and that is a uh, a 12 mil so I just make put that on and give it a little shot with your fist basically that'll loosen it off nicely take those out Now you can take this whole thing off, just slide it off, and you can actually set it back down over by your tie rod end. And you can see the brake pads. Now the brake pads have these springs here, so you just kind of squeeze the springs a little bit with your fingers, just like this. Just compress them, and then just pop them out. We're going to reuse these, so hold on to those. And your brake pads you can just slide them out slide them and there's your brake pads see I actually have lots of wear left but I've already committed to doing this so I've already bought my part so I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna switch them we've got about 50 percent of pad wear still and I'm at a hundred thousand kilometers on this car which is very impressive so I thought well that would need them but I don't <laughs> not yet anyway so Take those off. Now there should be shims on the back of these. Um, depending on which kind of brake pads that you bought, you might have to reuse these shims that are on the pads already. So we're gonna set those aside. All right, so now we're going to remove the caliper mounting bracket. And that uses, you'll need a 17 mil uh, socket and a braking bar or a big ratchet helps. Okay. So these are put on at about 80 foot pounds, so yeah, that's it. So the bigger the bar, the easier this is. Okay, once those are loose, they should come out pretty easily. There you go. And then here's your caliper mount, and this has these little clips on it for the brake pads to slide back and forth in because this whole assembly moves so the pads will be able to move and this whole assembly moves back and forth to center itself over the uh, the disc now we're going to remove the disc because when we replace our pads we're going to have to replace the disc too So now we have to re remove this screw so it's a Phillips head screw and I'm going to put on my safety glasses and I'm going to use a long Phillips bit and a hammer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my Phillips bit in here and I'm going to hammer this just to loosen the screw. Okay. Then I'm going to use my impact gun on reverse. And I'm going to push heavy onto that. This is a number three, so you, the biggest Phillips head uh, bit that you can get. So push in hard. Mm. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So that's really the key to removing this is to hammer it and give it a bunch of good hard shots. Watch your fingers and make sure that you use some WD-40 or something beforehand, okay? And if you can't get this out, 
you can actually just drill it out because it serves no purpose after the car is built. Now when they're manufacturing it, it's to hold it on while they're manufacturing it. That's the only purpose for this. So now I have to take the rotors off and the rotors will be on really tight. So since we're going to be uh, replacing the rotors, we're going to tap them a bunch of times with a hammer. So once again, wear your safety glasses. Just so that we can remove them. There we go. You'll see it pop and then you can take it out. Because they're just rusted on, right? Everything's rusted on. Okay. So inside it rusts around the hub and then it rusts around all these uh, wheel studs. Okay. Once that's off, um, you can either get these turned, which I never bothered to do because it's almost the same price just to get new ones. So I'm just going to get new ones and I'm going to scrap these. Now, we get our new rotors, they come individually wrapped and they're covered in oil. So here we go. Oh, this one's like completely sealed. There we go. So they're covered in oil, so we have to get the oil off of it. So we use disc brake cleaner for that. So with the disc brake cleaner, we just spray it all over. Give it a good wash off here. Flip it over to the other side. And then we'll wipe it off. So I use some shop towels. I'll just give it a good wipe down. Get all the surfaces. Okay, and just gets the oil off. Now before we put the new one on, I'm just going to use a small wire brush and I'm going to try to knock off, especially around this area of the hub, and try to knock all the rust and crap off of that. And go all the way around it. Okay, just clean that up and then I'm going to go over the threads here and get all those, try to get them relatively clean. Then I'm going to use anti seize compound. It's called anti seize compound. I'm going to put a little bit of that all the way around here. And that's going to help with the rust so we can get these off the next time. And I'm going to put a little bit in where the screw is that holds the hub on. I'll put a little bit there. I'm going to put a little bit on each one of these threads, not a lot, just a little, just so that they don't rust on. So if you're on the side of the road and you have to take your tire off, you'll be able to do that. Okay. Then, because my car is still under warranty and stuff at the dealer, I'm going to reuse this screw, even though you don't have to. So when I put the the rotor on, I'm going to put the screw in. But once again, you don't have to do this. So line it up to where the screw is. Slide it in. And then I'm going to put a little bit more on this screw because I really want to make sure it comes out. Okay. Just gonna straighten that out and install it. There we go. In all the way. <clears throat> now we're gonna put on our new pads. Before we do that, we're gonna clean off the caliper holder. And in here, you have where the sliders are. And you're just going to clean those off. That wire brush again. 
Okay. Now, with your new brake pads, you should get some grease. And what I did was I cut a corner out, and what I'm going to do is put a little grease here. Let's put a little grease on each one of these. So I'm going to push all the grease down to the edge here so I can squeeze it out. It'll be hard to see, but basically I'm just putting it on. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can spread it later. Okay. And I'm just going to use a nail. I'm going to spread it around with a nail. Get it on all your surfaces. Turn it around. Just a nice coat so it slides around. Alright. Alright, so this just slides down here. And that fits in like that. <clears throat> we take our two bolts. A little bit of anti seize on them, which is not very much, just a touch. Just a little touch. Line those up. Put them in. Now these ones, I'm just going to tighten them up a little bit by hand here. Not a, not a ton. Alright, so we got our torque wrench out. 80 foot pounds. Here the click. Give it a couple of clicks. There we go. Nice and tight. It's a big torque wrench, eh? So, we're going to pull out these. So we're going to pull the rubber boot down, pull these out, and these are your caliper slide pins. And I have a disc brake and caliper lube. So it's like a high temperature grease. So I'm going to put some of that on this. Yeah, I'll put a bunch on that. Because it's important for your brakes, these parts are all moving, so it's important that they slide around. So just spread it around, pop it back in, slide it all the way in, and then reset your boot. You just have to kind of push it over top, and once it's set, it'll be over that little edge, that little lip. Let's pull the other one off. the boot back. Okay. See, this one's tight. There we go. So, once again, a little bit of lube on that, and cover the whole pin with it. Okay. Put the pin back in. Set the boot. Sometimes the boots are a pain. Just keep working at it until it sets. It will. Okay. So here's our pads. I got these from CarQuest this time. So these pads have the shims on them. So I don't have to worry about that. So the pad with the squealer, that goes on the inside, and it's on kind of a round, right? So you match that round up with your disc, and basically put one edge in there, line this one up, and it should slide in. Sometimes they're a little tricky. Just 
sometimes. There we go. There we go. Let's try the top first. First or bottom first? There we go. So what we have to do here is just make sure that this piston is pushed back far enough. So we will take our caliper, our C-clamp, put our C-clamp in here. And we'll try to even this up and get it centered as much as possible. We're just going to push this back, not quite, not quite until it's flush, but sort of close. Okay, so I'm also going to take a little bit of this lube, just a tiny little bit, put it around the edge of that caliper, that piston. Put a little tiny bit around the piston. Okay. Alright, so before we put the springs on, let's measure this, make sure it fits, fits over top. Good. Now, set that back up there. Put our springs in. So, grab one at a time. So, put one here. Hold that with one hand. Put this one over here. It's going to want to push these pads apart. So, make sure they're in all the way. Spring. Hold the pad at the top. Take the bottom one. Put that one in. Make sure it's in the right way. Slide that one over. Push that all the way down. Okay. See how they're pointing towards each other here? Now, grab your caliper and move it down and try to slide it over top. And that'll hold everything in place. Push these pins in. Okay. You can slide it in. These have like this little washer and it can be turned around. This is the proper position so the flat goes up against here and the rounded part is on the outside. Same with the bottom. We have our bolts that go into the caliper slides and we're gonna just put a tiny bit of any seize compound on it. Screw that in. A little bit of anti seize compound, just a touch. All right, so that's in. So your springs are in, your pads are in, they're in the right position, squealers on the back, they follow the contour of the brake, everything fits together properly, and then we're going to torque our caliper slide bolts. Now these, we're going to tighten them up a little bit by hand first. And then, so these are set for 25 foot-pounds, so use your torque wrench again, give it a couple of clicks, that's in good and tight. Oh, also, to make this easily accessible, turn the wheel this way, right? When you do the other side, turn the wheel towards you so that the caliper is out more, it gives you more space to work. So you got to remember our pattern, right? So, start a little bit on the bottom. 
Oops, wrong one. Just give it a start. Skip one, go to the next one. Alright, give this one a little more of a shot. Same about this one. So, make sure you remove your axle stand, both of them, drop the car, lower it down. So, these are also 80 foot-pounds, so make sure that they're tight. Torque them in a star pattern. So I tried to make this video very thorough so you could see all the little steps, see all the parts as clearly as possible. I know it's it's difficult to do. Um, you almost need a cameraman and it'd be better if the car was up on a hoist for sure. But uh, anyway, since I don't have a cameraman and I don't have a hoist yet, we'll, uh, <laughs> this will have to do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Good luck on your repair. Cheers.